Hello guys, welcome back. I'm excited to share with you something today I've wanted to do for some time now, but just haven't got around to it. When I'm in Holland, it's my favourite snack. The first thing I do is find a bar that sells this by the dozen. So we're going to make some bitter balls today. The perfect snack to go with beer. <laughs> uh, going to make a little fire and uh, we'll get started. I've got this big lump of chestnut that's just too knotty to split, so that can be like a brace for the fire. A couple of other bits here. Got some paper birch here that I collected, and uh, just some normal gnarly birch. So we use this to actually catch a spark. chunky ferro rod. It's actually a bit drier than it has been here. Not rained in a few days. Makes a change. Now there's not a ridiculous amount of prep work here. There's a few stages to this cook, but the prep isn't so bad. So just start off with an onion. And for this, I'm just going to dice it fairly small. Don't need a huge amount. I'm just going to place this grill by the fire. I don't need too much heat for the first stage. And that first stage is just going to be warming up this pan, ready for the onions and the meat. Just waiting for a few more coals on that fire and for that pan to heat up and I'll carry on. But like I was saying, bitter balls or bitter ballen is a, a great Dutch kind of beer snack. 
along with croquettes. Croquettes are generally potato based, but uh, the bitter balls are, are meat. So um, you can use any meat. What I liked to do was uh, use leftover barbecue, so pulled pork brisket, things like that. But um, yeah, I'm just going to use like the standard kind of minced ground beef today, which I think is kind of the, the basic bit of ball. But uh, whatever you do, they are gorgeous and very Moorish. Just going to add some oil to this. I'm also going to put my Dutch oven by the fire here, start warming that through, it's quite cold out and uh, cast iron takes a little while to warm up, so at least that'll get started. And I'm going to go in with them onions, start sweating them down. So now I'm just going to go in with some of that meat. I'm going to put my meat aside for the next stage. I'm going to try and keep some of that fat in the pan. Now get in the pan with some butter. Now I'm just going to add flour to this. Make a bit of a roux. that roux made, I'm just going to add in stock. Now I'm going to add in some chopped parsley. And I'm going back in with that meat. Very creamy and nice. So I'm going to take this off the heat and add some seasoning. So we're off the heat, remember the Dutch oven stays warm. I'm going to add salt and pepper. And, and one of the most important ingredients is nutmeg. Now we'll get that all mixed in. And then this needs to cool right down.
while our mixture cools we can start warming the oil to fry them in. So as you can see I've got the mixture cooling here, I've got some parsley for garnish in here, some flour and then this bowl. I'm just going to crack two eggs give that a mix. I'll also clean my plate and on that I'm going to put some breadcrumbs as well. Now I've wet my hands a little off camera, I'm hoping that's going to help with this <laughs> mixture. If you're at home this needs to go in a fridge it will firm right up, but um, it's uh, started warming up already out here, so I have to do what I can. <laughs> so what you want to do is make a bowl, flour it, dip it in your egg, and then roll it in your breadcrumbs. It's best to have a clean hand and a dirty hand, but uh, we'll do the best I can. Yeah, it's a little soft this mixture, but uh, we'll do it. So no bigger than a golf ball. Okay, these are a little misshapen and a little softer than I would ordinarily do, but let's try it out. Well, I've got my Dutch beer. Now I've got some Dijon mustard. You've got to have mustard for dipping. Now, yes, they're a bit more misshapen than I ordinarily would have them, but oh, they are so good, these things. So they are holding this shape. Oh, that's incredibly hot. Sometimes you mix the Dijon with cream. Please take me back to <laughs> Holland and good times in bars. Absolutely gorgeous and I've always said the perfect beer snack. Crispy on the outside, all nice and soft and creamy and meaty in the middle. some prep for our next Dutch treat. And the only way to eat a Stroopwafel, place it on top of your cup so it goes all nice and soft. So make sure you get your stroop waffle before it dips into the tea and you lose it for good. Mm. Put 
perfect end. I hope you've enjoyed looking at some uh, Dutch cuisine. Dutch don't have uh, a good reputation for food, but I love some of it. Them bitter balls are beautiful. Right, thank you for joining me, thank you for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time. Goodbye for now.